Hey everybody, we are back with another episode of This Crazy Life. We are your hosts, Tara and Austin. Uh, today we have a great episode. We talk a little bit about our dream jobs growing up, what high school was like for us, hobbies. We honestly just talk a lot about like stories from our childhoods and things like that. And I think we've got a lot of fun content here for you, along with a quick little peek at Mario Kart. So stay tuned, hope you enjoy the episode, and remember... Life is crazy, we can't change that, but we can talk about it. Hey there. Hi. Hello. Another yes. episode. Yes, we're back. We are here. I am sweaterless and we're ready to go. Sweaterless. Sweaterless. You're, yeah. Why are you sweaterless? Well, because I wore this beautiful, beautiful sweater given to me no. by my loving mother. I am, aren't I? You, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I am. And you but saw me sweater? in it and you said, mm. take that off right now. Take it off. Take it <laughs> off. Dude, how long ago did I buy you that sweater? I don't know, but I, I think- know. I think the I fact know. that I kept it for as long as I have is a testament to how much but I But it love looks that like it. Here's what the issue is. You have such amazing clothes and you always go to those old faithfuls. Because the sweater's got to go. Because they're good. I mean, it's okay if you're going to cut the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yes, thank you nice, for listening nice to your mama. <laughs> cutting the grass here in Canada. You <laughs> look great, favorite. kid. You look oh, great. Thank you. Thank Sweaterless. You. Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, and yeah. y'all, you're welcome. Y'all welcome. Okay, okay we're okay, not even going to talk about this sweater anymore? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. episode three. Yeah, episode yeah. three. We're here. There you go. We're here. We're doing it. Uh, something yeah. I wanted to ask you just a little bit about was... Okay. Uh, Should I be afraid? Maybe. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it, it depends on what your answer is. Uh like, I just want to talk a little bit about just growing up, like, what were some of your dream jobs? Because, like, obviously, Ooh. we both ended up in real estate. And right. we're doing a pretty good job at it, if I don't mind saying. Oh, thank you very much. But uh, I was always curious about that. What were, like, when you were going growing through up? school, what were the things that you were hoping to do one day? That's a, well, thank you for asking me. You're very <laughs> oh welcome. Oh, my gosh. And you know what? Let me tell you, don't ask me a lot of questions. Oh, I was saving them all for this inevitable day. Okay, we're there you go. Millions of people. Dream jobs. Um, I grew up in an era uh, without really going too in deep about this, where um, I feel like women weren't really they didn't excel mm-hmm. in being CEOs and running businesses and so forth. Um, I grew up in Collingwood. That's not a slam on Collingwood. That what I'm talking about is the era. So Mm -hmm. I always remember as a little girl, always feeling like I wanted to do something. I didn't want, no offense, uh, to just clean the house, make dinners and raise a family. I always wanted to be a mother. Yeah, of course. That was was something even if I had to adopt. I always knew from very little. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wasn't going to be satisfied just sitting at home. And the ones that do... All the more power to them. Total respect. So, so I really wanted from a very young age, probably around seven, is when I really wanted to um, run my own business. And Mm -hmm. and for me, I always thought that I would open up a clothing store. Uh, Really. But again, remember, this is before the internet. It was before anything online. Like you know, most women were either, if they did work, were secretaries to you know, a man, the boss, the president, the this, the that. Um, I didn't want any of that. I wanted to open up some sort of store. I wanted to sell children's clothing and I, and I wanted to do something that I could control. Um, and so I would say, was that my dream job? That's what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, I started very young in Collingwood, um, realizing that, you know, my parents did the best they could, but we by no means had a lot of money. 
Um, and I wanted to dress like everybody else that I went to school with. And I realized probably from about the age of 10 that I had to um, find work in order to buy the clothes that I wanted. I didn't want to wear hand-me-downs, nothing wrong with that. But uh, so I started working. I started realizing that there was a lot of people in town that needed babysitters and uh, when I was 10, I started working for our next door neighbor. She was on nights and I would go at 11 o'clock at night, sleep there and leave at seven in the morning when she got home. And, and I just grew a babysitting business where I knew every weekend I had to have babysitting jobs lined up because I wanted to order the jeans that I wanted, <laughs> the sweatshirt that I wanted, the shoes that I wanted. Um, and I would routinely make calls if I didn't have uh, jobs on the weekend. I would routinely make calls to everybody in the town. I'm free this weekend. Do you need a babysitter? And I would line them up weeks in advance, Austin. Okay. I guess I would say I've never been one to just sit mm -hmm. and let business come to me. Right. I'm like, all right, we need business. Well, then we better get yeah. business. Okay. So, yeah. important question regarding your babysitting. How are the reviews? Dude, dude, <laughs> dude I can't even believe you would ask me that. Dude, I, now my friends that I'm still very close to in my Collingwood days, they were great babysitters too, but I never had issues getting jobs. I loved looking after kids. Right. I did. What about you when you were growing up? Uh, my dream jobs, uh, Craig, I feel like every couple of years, like I cycled through a different dream job for a while. Yeah. Like I remember when I was, I don't know, probably around six or seven, my goal was I'm going to be in a rock band. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to play guitar. I'm going to headline stadiums because like, honestly, yeah. where, where it came from was really simple. I listened to some 41 and I was like that, I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did do that very good. Yeah, you, you did. You got me a guitar. You got Andrew drums. You and started we took with music acoustic lessons. I started with acoustic, yep. went on to electric, and then during high school, I learned electric bass. You were good. Yeah, you well, still are. You. I'm sure if you were to pick it up. If I picked it up again, I feel like, I feel like bass. I could get back into guitar. I'd probably need a bit more work to get back into. What about writing? I actually did write a lot of you stuff did. for a while, yeah. Could like, we could we take a moment, though, because uh, writing was something that was my next passion growing up. Uh, mm. What was the series of, I'm going to say small books, or let's just say stories that you started writing? <laughs> what was the title of it? I think, if I'm recalling, it was Time Baby. Time Baby, yes. So the story behind that was in grade two, when I was eight years old, in our writing class or English class, whatever you want to call it, we were given what we were called uh, paper bag stories. And yep. what this was, was each table was given a brown paper bag. It was full of random items. And you had to write a one-page story based off of that. And the items that were in my bag were a picture of a tree house, a picture of a toddler, a pencil, and a glue stick. So I created <laughs> the superhero Time Baby, whose fortress is in a tree house, and he travels through time by connecting the ends of a pencil and a glue stick together. <laughs> 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 but you know what, Austin? You carried the Time Baby series for years. A while. <laughs> because every parent-teacher interview we would go to, always, it didn't matter what teacher you had, they always talked about, we're looking forward to the next chapter <laughs> because you carried it on and on and on. Whenever we had free time during classes or for writing assignments, always I would always like doodle up another story. And I'd ask if I could read it in front of the class. Right. I did that probably until grade five or grade six at least, maybe even longer. <laughs> Do you know what I think might be a good idea? Because what? I'm pretty sure uh, I saved a lot of your stuff, like at yours and Andrew's, a right, lot of your yeah. work. Um, I think there's a Time Baby one in there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dig really deep. 
But I think it would be pretty cool if you could start doing another series of Time Baby. <laughs> and maybe that's something you could share with our viewers. I could certainly try. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing about life is, you know, whether or not it was your passion growing up or not, because I think it's really hard for people to envision what they're going to be when they're so young. Yeah. Right. But at the end of the day, you have an incredible ability to write. Um, and I think that, you know, maybe for you, that's something that you could continue exploring. I feel like and, it's something and sharing I've it, for a while. you know? Yeah. 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 Well, that's interesting. So, Let's go a little deeper. deeper. High school. High school. All right. I mean, I feel like I could answer the question for you, but what did you what did you feel about high school? How what was your experience like? High school was an interesting time for me. Uh, yeah. I was going through a lot around that time. Mm -hmm. So, like going into grade mm -hmm. nine, I was coming in hot. I was fresh off of winning the awards from grade eight graduations. And I was going in, I was doing well. And then just year after year, I just started feeling more and more drained by it. Like you always hear going into high school, correct me if I'm wrong, people always say high school, cherish it, best years of your life. Yeah. Have, have yeah. you heard some variation yeah. of that from somewhere? Honestly, going into that, I just felt like, Oh, this is just stress and work. <laughs> stress like and of, work. Like a lot yeah. of work. Yeah. And yeah, honestly, like by grade 11, grade 12, like I was just mentally, I was completely just checked out, to be honest. Like I started skipping school. I honestly just wasn't really I putting remember. my all into it. I think, though, uh, and we'll talk about that in further episodes, <laughs> there was a lot that we discovered right yeah. with you but when you in your high school years you did meet a lot of really good friends yes I did I would say also one thing I will uh, credit high school to especially was there was one class that I took every year and it was always by far and away like the highlight of my year and that was the drama class which yeah. like I said in episode one theater kid shocker I know but yeah, <laughs> it was just every single time we would go into that class, it felt like it was just that shot of life, shot of adrenaline of, okay, I'm learning things about acting, things about theater. I was in like a theater production that was for a competition at the time. We didn't get anywhere, but like it was like a big deal. Like we were doing shows for yeah. the school, yep. shows on tour. But it was just that like, okay, here's the spark that I've been missing throughout so much of the rest of high school. And I think that's sort of what really set me on the path for like, maybe I want to pursue something in theater, something in acting. And then as time went on, that evolved more specifically into what is, and still is, my ultimate dream job of being a voice actor. Right. Like that's my ultimate end goal Whatever I'm doing, whatever I do along the way, I want to be good at it, but that'll always be like the star in the horizon that I'm always going to want to reach one day. And I know that, my son. <laughs> I know that. So there's this light that you get in your eyes yeah. when you start doing some of your voiceover acting. And, and I think that it's important in life, maybe uh, I think most would agree, that uh, you kind of try to to resonate with what that passion is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I would say being your mom, those high school years, you know, were good. You didn't have issues in school with people. Uh, you were really, bullied no. once, but uh, your brother took care of that. No problem. Yeah. Um, and we talked about that at your brother's wedding. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. But I think overall, you know, looking back on your high school years, you can look back and go, okay, it might have been really good and there might have been really dark times, but oh my gosh, look at where we are today. Yeah, and that's right? what I will say is that I did make a lot of friends. I always had that friend group that I hang, hung did. out with. Yes. Every single year that we were all together. <laughs> and I'm still friends with a few of them to this day. Yep, but yep, very true. Yeah, honestly, like it was a, it was a long road of self-discovery, which I guess in a way is sort of the best 
description of high school that you can really get. I think those are the years where you really learn the most about yourself, if not just a lot about yourself. Self-discovery, I like that. Yeah. That's very in tuned. Yep. And then I did a year at college. That's a story for another day. But anyway, how about yes, you? Yes, it is. How about you? How was your years of high school? My years of high school was um, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there was no self-discovery. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. You, you, you know, you're, you are way more philosophical than I am. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, I love you. Mm-hmm. But mine was, uh, mine growing up in, in Collingwood was very, it, it was fun. We had fun. I got good grades. You know, there was lots that we did. We would, I would sign myself out with my forging my mother's signature at the office Fridays at 1130 because we would all get in a car and go up to Blue Mountain at Molson's Rock and we would drink Molson X. Uh, Yeah, there was lots. It was, it was, I had hard times in school. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you break up with your boyfriend. Sure. Yeah. Oh, the drama. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> when I look back on that, I definitely look back on, on, it was fun. It, yeah. That's great. And I'm still really good friends with, with most oh, of them. Oh, yeah. I left Collingwood in grade 11, and that's when my family moved uh, back to where my dad's family was from, which Oshawa. So it was in grade 12 when I was at Eastdale that, uh, that I met your dad. Right, yes. So, yeah, it all worked <laughs> out, it all worked out that way, but. Yeah, the, uh. Signing out with your parents' signature thing. Uh, I, I think I tried a variation of that once. Sorry? A variation of that once and never again oh, because okay, I got well, caught by dad. Is that the time the school called us to go down? That we found out you skipped 65 classes? No. Oh, but that was another time. Yeah. So what, yeah, what had happened 65. was. 65. I said I was skipping school during yeah. those years. Well, you said that now. You didn't tell me that. Well, you found out then. Yeah, we sure did. So I, didn't I remember have to tell walking you into that. the office and you were <clears throat> sitting on this. But uh, <laughs> anyway, what I had tried to do was, it wasn't forging signatures, but once I was just, I don't even remember why I'm having a bad day or something. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. But I called into school to sign myself out because uh, if you don't get like signed out, the school will call you and say, hey, uh, yeah. you weren't at school, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. So I tried to impersonate dad <clears throat> and say, hey, I'm signing <laughs> Austin out. He's not feeling well. And my voice hadn't fully broken yet. So needless to say, they caught on that it was not, in fact, my dad making the call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should have trained you better. <clears throat> okay. First of all, your dad never called the school. No. So if if you guys had to stay home, it was always me that friggin' called. Right. Right? You should have pretended you were a woman and they probably wouldn't have known. Well, my voice had partially broken. It hadn't fully broken yet. <laughs> I was caught in like the awkward middle part where my voice <laughs> didn't know what to be. Yet. You know, let's just say this. I am one of, you know, a million other moms that hopefully will end up watching this. It is so interesting to me now that you and your brother are grown men, your brother's you're, t- you're turning 30 God, in yeah, June. Yeah. Uh, your brother's 32. It is so interesting to me to hear about all of the stuff that you guys did behind our backs. Because at the time, I did not think you guys could fool me at all. And a lot of times, especially with Andrew, we did catch him as he was starting. Oh, yeah. But you, you, you were the person that didn't ever want to do anything wrong. You were no, so no. by the book. Yeah. Where I remember times going to you and saying, like, it's okay to F up. Like, right, you yeah. don't have to be perfect all the time. <laughs> so, A, kudos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> like, I'm so proud that you actually did it. At the time, I know I was royally mad at you, but... I think you and dad actually did say that If you that could one let time. that side out <laughs> just a little bit more. Uh, did you have any like stories about like getting trouble at school? Yes, I did. Okay. Well, my dad and mom didn't really want me to date. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. Dated a lot. Dated a lot. Um, but they had just, it was just the beliefs that they the had, time. their views. Yeah. Um, so trouble at school... Oh, yeah. 
Okay, yeah. So I'm going to go back to grade three. Um, okay. Uh, there was, in our grade three class, there was a kid who's, oh, can I say that? I don't even know if I can say his name. But his name sounded a lot like Ronald McDonald. So he got teased a lot. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. It's not funny. Mm -hmm. It's not funny. Anyways, so there was one boy and we were doing some sort of whatever at school and we sat at tables like this, like we didn't really have our own desks. Um, and I remember him saying that I was dating Ronald McDonald and I was not. Okay. And I was really getting tired of him um, teasing me. And people were laughing and stuff, and it was really starting to irritate me. I don't know if you know, but I do have a bit of a bad temper. So I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen it a few times. <laughs> Not directed at you, pretty much, but no. Um, anyway, so he was teasing me, and I got really mad, and I had the pencil in my hand, and I mean, it is what it is. So he turned around, and I went. <laughs> you stabbed him. <laughs> I did. I did. I got so much trouble. <laughs> I, I, I wonder why. Have I not told you that story? No. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, um, him and I are friends on Facebook now. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So long and short of it is I got called into the office and I remember Mr. Gilroy was like super, super mad at me and I was like freaking out and the teacher took me down there and she was like, I know you did it because you were being teased. And I'm like, well, he shouldn't have said I was dating him. Um, long and short of it is, I gave him lead poisoning. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. And I remember he was so mad at me because he had to get these shots like once a month. It was like a really bad oh, scene. no. Yeah. Well, but right back then, pencils would use like real lead. Do they not know? They, well, they switched oh, it because it would give new. people lead poisoning. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why they switched it. Yeah. So like, do you know? Yeah, so I got in trouble then. And there were times, like, I never really got in trouble at school because I always was just, you know, okay, do my work, you know, hang out with my friends. Right, but, yeah. But, you know, there were times in grade 10 when I would sneak to the school dances that, you know, my dad would show up at the door. And one time the DJ, it was grade 10, and it was the band um, Asia that came to play at our school. Oh. Yeah. And the DJ said, Tara Andrews, your dad is at the door. <laughs> Frick. And I went running out the back door. Well, yeah. Freaking right I did. <laughs> Anyways, That's your yeah. only shot left There's at that lots point, of other right? stories like that. There's lots of other stories. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. What were some other things you did growing up, like, outside of school, like, just hobbies, things like that? Like, what'd you do for fun? You know what? I think that... Um, I don't remember having a lot of hobbies because I was always really just outside playing. Mm -hmm. We swam a lot. And I think it was just the environment that I grew up with. I right, mean, yeah. you know, there wasn't more than one TV in the house. There was one rotary phone, you know, so we would come home from school, do our homework. And I mean, we were right back out the door. So bike riding and hiking and swimming up there was, was the one of the best memories I have next to raising you guys. Okay. But ha yeah. And I, I love to read. <laughs> Not anymore. I like to watch YouTube now. Well you still well you still do like your books Little every bit. now and then. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. Well, were there any like spots in particular that you would go to all the time when you were Sunset Point. Sunset Point. Yeah. Which I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know Collingwood. It was very a beach well. area. It was a beach area in Collingwood. Okay. Yeah, I've taken you there before. You don't remember? No. All no, those I really times, don't. I would go back to Collingwood and say, "This is where your mother grew up. Look at these are all the important spots." They resonated zero with you. When I took you up, remember when your dad and I took you up? We taught you how to ski. Yes, I oh, do. Re I, I remember that barely. Barely. Like, I remember learning to ski. I don't remember any of the context surrounding it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe we'll go up there again. Well, I learned to ski in like the single digits of my age, so. Yeah? Yeah. Were you that young? Yeah, what's weird? What's happening to my memory? Like I was, I think, seven or eight the first time I tried to ski. It would have been on like Kitty Hills and things like that, but. It was a bunny hill. Oh, Half for Blue sure. Mountain. For sure, yeah. It was, yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. And then when we went to uh, Quebec, that's when I tried my first and last foray into snowboarding. <laughs> that did not go over well that with did Austin. Not go well. Yeah. That did not fun, go over. Fun fact, snowboarding. Hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in how you look at it. Just like when we talked about going on the roller coaster, you yeah. know, but, uh, not I'll... many people get to snowboard on Mont no. I look at that as a massive accomplishment. Yeah. But things I discovered, A, I honestly thought going into it, oh, snowboarding, you're only dealing with one board instead of two separate feet. It'll be a lot easier. And it was when I was there that people were telling me, actually snowboarding is like usually considered a lot harder than skiing. I still tried it though. And the second thing I learned is that if you're not turning all the time, you move very fast, very quickly. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But honestly, Austin, to be fair, you also had your own personal instructor. Yes. Yeah. So you were fine. All right. Oh, I'm not saying it was, I'm not saying it was like a traumatic event or anything. I'm saying it was funny. Yeah. I was like, all right, let's go. (laughs) Just immediately. (laughs) What about your hobbies? Well, I mean, you probably know better than anyone, but honestly, like I did a lot of reading growing up. Less less so now, but like I used to love books when I was a little kid. You like did. You would, you would get me all the yep. books in the McDonald Hall series. That was one of my favorites. Yeah. Uh, yep. I think his author was uh, Gordon Corman or something like that. I used to read his stuff all Good the time. Good books. Oh, yeah. yeah, great books. And obviously, as you know very well, My main hobby back as a kid and even Uh, really now. (coughs) You say games. It is games. Uh, Yeah. uh, Yeah. Well, I mean, you did get me the systems growing up. I did. Yeah. We did. Before I even had any kind of concept of what video games were, they were just sort of this thing that was always there and always available. Well, you watched your brother. Your brother started (coughs) playing them and then, yeah. 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 But you know what? If we can go kind of above, beyond the games, you also swam. I did, You were a big swimmer. We had a pool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We had a pool for a while, yeah. Well, there you go. Yep. And for sure, but even now, still going back to that, I do play games a lot. And speaking of which, I've actually picked out another game for us to play today. (laughs) <laughs> okay. Okay. You're going to one up me again? Well, we'll see. Cause this time, which last, one is it? Well, last time we were working together this time we actually are competing. This one is super Mario Kart. Cart. 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 Yes. Okay. So we played those when you were little. Yes. Yes. This is the very first one. Super Nintendo have not played it since whenever I played that the last time as a So we're kid. playing against each other. We're playing against okay. each other. So let me just under let's help our audience understand uh are we competitive? More than we'd like to admit. Is it more me competitive than you? I'm quietly competitive. You and Andrew are loudly competitive. <laughs> we are loudly competitive. Yeah, because I do feel like you are competitive. Oh, I for do. Sure. I do. So you have not, full disclosure, you have not played this game. You weren't practicing. You weren't doing any of that. None of that. No. No. This will be the first time I have played Super Mario Kart since probably when I was four or five. All right. Honestly. So let's jump into that. All right. here with Super Mario Kart, the original. They're honestly like, I don't know if you know, they're still releasing these all the time. Like we're on Mario Kart 8 now, I think is the newest one. Okay. But I thought it'd be fun to take you Didn't through know. the very first. Okay. And the last time we played this, you would have been how old? I have a deal list. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're going to let me win? So we're not, pl- we're, we're competing this time. We are competing. We will be racing against you're each gonna other. You're going to let me win? 
I'm gonna figure out the controls oh, first is what I'm gonna right. do. Okay, okay, all right. I don't know. I don't know about this, Austin. I'm telling you. All right, well, okay. let's, let's jump in and figure it out, shall we? <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm super nervous right now. 1992. 1992. Okay, I'm I am remembering this. I am. Yeah, you well, are. Well, I mean the picture, the picture yeah. that I'm looking at. <laughs> but these were not the controllers that we used when oh, we played this. Not. Like they were the little ones. I'm sure they've got like replica controllers we could get. Like one day maybe we could do that. I mean, are you gonna? All one, right. Two, two player, two player game. Yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Match race, I guess. All right, we'll try that. Is this okay? Yes, please. Oh, you're... Am I the girl? Are you the girl? No, I'm gonna be Yoshi. Okay, did you pick me? You pick you. Oh, do I go... Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, no what worries. What do I press? Uh, B, the bottom button. B. And again? Again to confirm. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm gonna whoop your ass. All right. That's what I'm gonna do right now. Okay, just get ready. Okay, so Are we let's, let's start <laughs> oh with the God. basic. We'll do Mario Circuit 1. We're racing that thing at the bottom? That's the that's the track we'll be racing on. Ooh, this is not coming back to me. <laughs> this is not, not, I'm looking at this going, I don't think I have seen this before. Okay, go. Okay. All right, oh, okay, let me, go? Let me okay. win. <laughs> yes, Where are this we? Is okay. Where are we? Where are, Hold on. Oh my God. Oh, this is, okay. Oh, I'm the girl. Yeah. And you, you press up. Oh my you god, press B. where am I? You press B. Oh, B. Okay. oh I press B. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shoot. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh, I okay. think I got a coin. This is very sensitive. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold okay. on. Hold on. Okay, the, hold on. The uh hold the on. right bumper. Oh, I found oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> You oh, found me. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Something at me. Oh, okay, I, I see. I see. Wait up, Austin. Wait up for me. I'm your mother. Okay. Oh, that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, That's the coins? item button. I got okay. coins. No, Is you just got oh, hit by a shell. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh shit, I'm on lap two. Okay. Oh. 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 Where are you? Uh, very far ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, I got a coin, Austin. <laughs> Oh, did I hit something again? Oh my God. Okay. What is happening? How many laps are there? I'm on lap four. We, oh my gosh. Okay. I don't remember. Oh. We had this, oh, oh, did you hit me? Yeah. What is happening? Uh, I think I've laughed you for the second time. <laughs> oh, for the second time. Okay. Can I just cut across and beat you? Uh, you need to finish a few more laps, but. Oh, okay. <laughs> How far? Oh, I'm on lap three. I'm on lap three. I'm on lap. Shit. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ooh, I might throw up here. This is a little bit queasy. Oh, oh, did I get a coin? No. I hit myself with my own banana is what I did. Oh, <laughs> that was a big loser. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, look at you all celebrating. Like, you know, she's like doing this big, yahoo! I mean, oh, my mother. Great, he's having a great all time. Right, well, clearly you keep playing this game. Clearly. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you saw my yeah. footage. I was not doing well. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. Well, we could always play again another time if you'd like. Uh, not this one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. How about one of the newest ones? I don't know. We'll see. We'll see? Okay. <laughs> all right. Shut that down. Great. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you everybody for joining in. We're very grateful that you're with us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And listen, we want to hear from you. If there's anything that you want us to talk about, just put it in the comments below. Enjoy us next time for laughing through life with a mom and her son.